However bad you think Israel is, it's worse. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. So it turns out the IDF has been running a telegram channel featuring homemade snuff films in which Gazans are brutally murdered by Israeli forces, captioned with celebrations of the gore and pain therein, like burning their mother, you won't believe the video we got, you can hear their bones crunch. The IDF had previously denied any association with the channel, but Haaretz now reports that it was directly run by an IDF psychological warfare unit. This is one of those many, many times where Israel is so awful that at first you're not sure what you're even looking at. You think you must be misreading the report. Then you read it again and go, oh wow, that's so much worse than I would have guessed. However bad you think Israel is, you can always be sure that information will come out later that proves it's even worse. Tucker Carlson has been spotted in Moscow, generating speculation that he's there to interview President Vladimir Putin, and the liberal commentariat are losing their minds about it. There is no valid basis for Westerners to object to Putin being interviewed by a Western pundit. There's no moral basis, because Israeli officials have had unfettered access to wildly sympathetic Western press throughout four months of administering an active genocide. There's no basis on the grounds that it hurts U.S. information interests, because that would be admitting that U.S. information interests depend on hiding information from the public about matters as basic as what a foreign leader thinks about his own actions, and essentially acknowledging that the Western media are supposed to function as propaganda services for U.S. military and intelligence agencies. Every possible objection is also a confession about what the U.S. empire and its media actually are. Americans. Healthcare, please. U.S. government. Sorry, did you say bomb Syria, Iraq, and Yemen in facilitation of an active genocide? Americans. No, healthcare. U.S. government. All right, you drive a hard bargain, but let's go bomb Syria, Iraq, and Yemen in facilitation of an active genocide. Biden isn't technically lying when he says the U.S. does not seek conflict in the Middle East. The U.S. seeks domination in the Middle East and would prefer to receive that domination willingly from submissive subjects. Only when Middle Easterners refuse to submit is there conflict. The U.S. has never done anything good for the Middle East. All it's brought to the region is a bunch of murderous military operations and the non-stop murderous military operation that is the state of Israel. Setting up a bunch of military bases in countries on the other side of the planet and then going to war with anyone who tries to kick them out is pretty much the exact opposite of how a sane and moral military would be used. U.S. foreign policy is essentially one big, long war against disobedience. Bombing, regime changing, starving and destabilizing any population anywhere on Earth who dares to insist on its own self-sovereignty instead of letting itself be absorbed into the folds of the global empire. They call different parts of it the Israel-Hamas war, the Iraq war, the war on terror, but really it's all the same war, the war on disobedience. One long operation to brutalize the global population into obedience and submission, year after year, decade after decade. When it comes to Israel, the main difference between liberals and conservatives is that conservatives support Israel because they like it when Muslims get murdered, while liberals support Israel because mumble-mumble-something-something anti-Semitism, Israel has a right to defend itself, but we have serious concerns about the humanitarian, hey look over there, it's Trump! If the Gaza genocide had happened pre-internet, it would have been a fringe issue hardly anyone knew about. The Western press would have been able to get away with exponentially more cover-ups of Israeli crimes. Western politicians would have been able to get away with way more lies about what's really happening. Israeli officials would have been far less careful about their statements of genocidal intent in their own media. And the IDF would have been vastly more blatant and obvious about its extermination campaign. It's only because normal people are getting eyes into what's really happening that this issue is subject to worldwide outcry and condemnation that has placed the empire on the back foot. The political media class never does the right thing because it wants to. 
It does the right thing when it is forced to by normal human beings with healthy consciences. The fate of humanity rests on the ability of ordinary people to freely circulate truth. We got a podcast coming out soon. Stay tuned.